I'm going to show you how to avoid the dreaded flash in Flint Over Max transitions. So I've created this transition and watch as I go back, that gray screen kind of just pops out of existence. And that's the kind of flash that I'm talking about. It doesn't look very good. So let's go into these screens and edit the transition and see where I went wrong. So I'm at the start of the transition and this screen that says juice guide, that's the start screen. So I should only be seeing the start screen at the start of the transition, but I see this other screen partially overlaying it. That's what causes the flash. When the transition starts, it's gonna go instantly from me just being on the start screen to the beginning of the transition, which includes this screen over the top. So really what you need to do is make sure that at the start of the transition, the end screen is completely hidden, either outside of the screen entirely, or if it's overlapping it, it should be faded out. You just need to make sure that what you see here at the start looks like the start screen. The same thing can happen at the end. So if I move the home screen on top, I can have this sticking out, but really at the end of the transition, I need to make sure that the start screen is completely hidden. So let me open up that transition again, and you can see that I've fixed it. Another common situation where people see the dreaded flash is if they try to overlay two screens on top of each other. So I'm gonna fade out this background on the menu screen, and then I'm gonna create a new transition. In this transition, I'm gonna align the screens, and I'm gonna drag these buttons down here. So that's gonna cause them to pop up. And then I'll fade the background out. So now at the start screen, I'm seeing the start screen, and then I go to the end, and I can see that content of the start screen behind the end screen. So that's a nice looking effect. And in the transition designer here, it looks like it all works well. But remember, at the end of the transition, you need to see exactly the end screen. And if I go back into the canvas, you can see that the end screen doesn't show juice guide in the background. So even though it looks right in the transition designer, remember the rule is the end screen needs to look exactly as it looks in the canvas. So let's check out the preview for this one. See, it almost works, but right at the end of the transition, it jumps to the end screen and you see a flash because the end of the transition doesn't look exactly like the end screen. So let me show you how to fix that. There's a couple ways to do it. And I've set it up here. All I did was take the content of the initial screen and place it behind that shade layer in the second screen. So now this screen looks exactly as I want it to look when I arrive at it because there's no way to show one screen behind another, I need to set it up exactly here in the canvas. And this isn't some oversight that we made. We actually intentionally designed Flinto this way because um, showing overlapping content can cause some complexity to arise in your prototype and having these separate screens forces you to consider each exact screen state. So let's check this one out. And yeah, that looks nice. That's the effect I was going for. But there's one other way. If you don't like the idea of duplicating this content onto two screens, you know, sometimes that's fine, other times it might be cumbersome. You can use the behavior designer to do this all on a single screen. So let me show you how it works first. I'll open up the preview with that screen and I can tap back and forth and it does a similar effect to last time, but this time I'm not actually leaving this screen. The behavior is just changing how it looks. So I've got this behavior and it encompasses all those buttons and the background, and I'll go into the behavior designer and show you how it's set up. So in the initial state, you just see the recipes button and all the other stuff is hidden. It's just faded out and the buttons are slided down. Then there's a link on the recipes button that goes to this shown state. And on the shown state, I just selected all these layers, faded them in and dragged the buttons into the positions that I wanted them. So that works really nicely. It's a good option for this kind of thing. And if you wanted to actually make links on those buttons, you can still, you know, you can't see them here in the canvas to make a link off of them, but you can still select them in the layer list and create a link off of them that way, or select the group that has the behavior on it, and you can change the default state here in the inspector. So now in the canvas, I'm seeing the revealed state of the menu, and I can select the individual layers and create links off of them.